strap into your bed and take flight into the orbit of your imagination with some beautifully interesting space shuttle facts and uh, interesting little interesting video topic. She uh, told me she started a printing press um, a company. What was it? Now I have to look it up. A print shop. <laughs> I'm such a dunce. <sighs> um, called Main Engine Press. She named it after the main engine of the, uh, the space shuttle. So, yeah, I thought that was so cool. So I'm going to, uh, in honor of her support the channel, we're going to talk about NASA and the space shuttle. And of course, the space program is famously, infamously, cost ineffective. So, we're over here, tapping out our wallets, tapping into, what's the best analogy, I don't know. I don't know what pun is most fun, but I was in the checkout line the other day, with my my wallet out and it was just I just started tapping on it and realized it makes those uh, soft kind of leather sounds I don't know how else to talk about it but um, so I thought I would space shuttle fleet. So it was around for about 30 years. 30 years. Its top, top speed was 17,000, 17,500 miles per hour. Speed, the crew could see a sunrise and then or sunset every 45 minutes. 45 minutes. It orbited the Earth in 90, 90 minutes. 90 minutes. So this is pretty interesting that it's traveled a combined mileage. Um, each, I, I say it, but I mean the combined five, five different space shuttles. So there's been five different space shuttles in their combined distance. It was 500 in 13.7 million miles, or 1.3 times the distance between Earth, Earth and Jupiter. Well, in each order, orbiter, each of the space shuttles is called an orbiter, is, uh, has traveled, of course, except for the, uh, the Challenger, because of that terrible disaster. Yeah, so each orbiter is traveling a uh, combined distance of 500 million miles. That's so far. 
as far as the uh, science about it. You may not know that it's doubled as a science laboratory. There have been 22 space lab missions, space lab missions, where science, astronomy, or physics have been studied inside a special module carried on the space shuttle. Space Lab, a uh, reusable laboratory built for use on the space shuttle flights, allowed scientists to perform experiments in microgravity, which is essentially uh, not the absence of gravity, but the absence of, what would it be, it's, it's in free fall motion. So essentially they're orbiting around a constant free fall. So, so uh, they're never actually pressed up against any walls. So it's like gravity is always affecting them, but they're moving tangential. Pretty interesting, actually. Yeah, microgravity is. Let's define that. Okay. So in a way, I guess a good way to explain what microgravity is. Microgravity is. The, uh, almost the near absence of G forces. So I guess you're because you're in constant free fall, there's no actual force mass times acceleration. So there's no normal counteracting normal force which would be the force that is when you sit or whenever you're touching the earth held down by gravity the structure of the objects like a chair or the ground or the soles of your shoe or your bed hopefully your bed right now the forces that are creating the solid structure so the atomic forces, really, that are holding you up is actually considered a normal force, which means that it counteracts the force holding you down by gravity. So, so in, uh, in space, in Earth orbit, that normal force is absent because technically you're in free fall, free fall constantly. And water bubbles outward instead of upward. Um, a candle, instead of making a uh, teardrop shape, a candle actually makes a sphere, which is pretty interesting. I think it burns itself out. There's 
microgravity and this is becoming an episode on microgravity <laughs> I don't know I don't know why I just follow I follow my instincts <laughs> but I follow my interest <sighs> that's how this channel got started but uh <laughs> bacteria you'll be happy to know are more deadly in microgravity so they, uh, they grow more, I guess, which makes sense. Something um, confined to a flat surface would be, uh, would have a lot less room to propagate than something not confined to it and growing in a sphere. So that's pretty interesting. Because there's no gravity, it means there's no buoyant force to uh, separate, I guess. Yeah, okay. So if liquids are held down by gravity, that means that lighter, less dense molecules get separated and come to the surface because they are... Uh, held down by less mass, I guess. But there's, uh, in zero gravity, there's nothing pushing gas bubbles up and out of carbonated drinks. This means that carbon dioxide bubbles simply stagnate inside sodas and beers, even when they're inside astronauts' bellies. Without gravity, astronauts can't burp and uh, hmm, that makes drinking beer extremely uncomfortable. But apparently there's a beer that is weak in carbonation and they market themselves as a space beer. Astronauts for hire. So back to our topic. In 1983, the uh, one of the Challenger's mission had animals as the prime component of the science and the social activities of ant colonies were actually examined. And uh, in the next mission, six rats were flown into the animal enclosure module to study animal behavior in space. So the, upon re-entry, the uh, space shuttle undergoes massive, massive friction forces with the air molecules in the atmosphere. So that's something that scientists and engineers had to counter. Space Shuttle's thermal protection system, or heat shield, contains more than 30,000 tiles, constructed essentially of sand, and all the tiles are thoroughly inspected before liftoff. They're crucial to allow the Space Shuttle return and, uh, of course, endure the intense, intense radiating red uh, you know they turn red with heat so much heat upon re-entry so they're engineered to be super super um, have a high capacity they're engineered to have a very very high heat capacity so after oh I guess uh Never mind, I guess I said that backwards. They're, they're engineered to have maybe a high conductivity, yet insulating properties such that after they're heated to peak temperatures, you can actually hold them in your hand 
they cool off fast enough to hold in your hand just a minute later. Now, that's, that's so fascinating that, uh, just makes you wonder, like, that, that was, those were probably really only invented because of the necessity from the space shuttle. It just makes you wonder how many other things out there are, uh, waiting to be invented with what we currently know just because they uh, we haven't yet had a dire need for them yet yet in the uh, the heaviest space shuttle this is an odd metric but weighed as much as 13 African elephants not Asian elephants those would be uh, smaller so be like 20 Asian elephants. In the Columbia, which was the first space shuttle to fly, weighed the most because NASA was actually still, apparently still researching lighter materials to use. And they integrated it as the research came out and, uh, Fruitful, fruitful, fruitful research. Yeah, speaking of holding my wallet, it's interesting that it was really, really expensive, which is a testament to government operations. It always seems like the government run things are so expensive. can't put a price on scientific research, but the person writing this little bit apparently can. Alright, they talked about being jealous that they couldn't fly in space, so I'm gonna look over that. But uh, NASA says that almost half, half a billion dollars to launch each space shuttle mission. 450 million dollars. So, um, someone... Space, space.com in an article written in 2005 um, said that if the space shuttle program is terminated uh, after 2010 it will have a total lifetime cost of 173 Given that flight rate, this this will result in a total program cost per flight of 1.3 billion dollars with a B again. 1.3 billion dollars per flight. Wow. That's a lot. And one of the many reasons why it was so expensive was that it didn't have a lot of reusable parts, which is why SpaceX is proving to be so, so lucrative. The uh, external tank, for example, wasn't reusable and had to be replaced with each launch. So yet another reason is that the equipment was very old equipment. It was designed in the 70s and um, 
built in the 80s, pretty much. And the shuttle had some modifications over the years, but it was designed in the 70s and built in the 80s, and uh, for the most part, it remained. some companies go out of business so basically uh, or basically their entire business is one component just that one component so being floated essentially uh, purely by the government so the cost goes up because they're not selling to anyone else and it's not profitable to uh, not produce in bulk. Yeah, so. Wow. NASA actually had to find parts of the show. Okay, so Molly just got home.